No countdown this morning, huh? No countdown this morning. Okay. Well, the silent countdown's woken me up. I need to get energized. Pray for your pastor. Friends online and in person, welcome in the name of God, God of second chances. I'm Pastor Juan G, reminding myself, serving here at Eldersgate United Methodist Church. Welcome to our hybrid worship. We are both online and in person. Why don't we, uh, in spirit, say hello to our friends online. As I watched last week online myself, I'm reminded to uh, be directly more relating to our friends online, so welcome. All are welcome here, and all always means all. Let us be humbled by that inclusivity. Come, let us celebrate God who transforms mourning into dancing and our weeping into joy. Come. Hey, good morning, church. It's Michelle Joyce connecting with you from my home in Snohomish, Washington. Please join me in the call to worship, praying the response. From the shores of our lives, Jesus calls us into the celebration of worship. Let us worship our God. From the edge of our worries and concerns, Jesus calls us into hope. Let us claim the hope of Christ Jesus. From the shallow places in our hearts, Jesus calls us into the depths of his love. Let us celebrate the gift of his love. From the breaking waves of sadness in our lives, Jesus calls us into joy. Let us renew our spirits in his joy. From the rising tides of our conflicts, Jesus While we're waiting for the glitches, uh, to address the glitches, I understand both having watched services online and being here in person that these small glitches can be frustrating because little micro things can uh, become sort of big things because we have other underlying things going on in our lives where little glitches uh, is frustrating. And I've learned in the last two years working with our team that it takes all of us, and the way we hold space together in glitches is a good life lesson um, in how we handle glitches in life. So let us bear with one another in love, offer patience, and always trust that God has more good for us, even if sometimes these little glitches makes us feel overwhelmed by the bigger glitches in life. So let us pray. That is one thing we can do for our tech team and our friends online and for each of us an extra opportunity to take time in prayer. While we wait as a uh, prayer and song, um, because I'm going to use it as part of the blessing for Jen, and it's sort of impromptu, I want to invite us, some of us may know the hymn, God is so good, 
Some of us may not, not so let's practice once. It's, uh, th it's very easy. God is so good three times, and then the last line is, God is so good to me, or God is calls us into the shores of peace. Um, one of the children's hymns I still remember. Um, Let us rest. I will sing it, and if you don't know it, you can hum it until we... I think we're still working on um, if. Ben, if you would give me your hands up so I know when we can stop singing, that would be good. Thank you. God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me again. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, she's so good to me. Hey, good morning church, it's Michelle Joyce connecting with you from my home in Snohomish, Washington. Please join me in the call to worship praying the response. From the shores of our lives, Jesus calls us into the celebration of worship. Let us worship our God. From the edge of our worries and concerns, Jesus calls us into hope. Let us claim the hope of Christ Jesus. From the shallow places in our hearts, Jesus calls us into the depths of his love. Let us celebrate the gift of his From love. Places in our hearts. From the breaking Jesus waves of sadness in our lives, Jesus calls us into joy. Let us renew our spirits in his joy. From the rising tides of our conflicts, Jesus calls us into the shores of peace. Let us rest in his peace. Let us celebrate the love of God and receive the blessings of Christ Jesus. Let us worship God. Let's pray. Today, we refer and I thought that this picture that I was thinking of on my iPhone and broadcasting it, but I keep forgetting that that's the way it came to be. It came on the earth, it came through the cross, but it came through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is just so humbling, isn't it? But our God loves us nevertheless. So, welcome that was on your screen. We're going to kind of get it all synced up for us. We might see it a few minutes later. Take this time and reflect on all the great things that God does in our lives and how He makes us whole and how He makes us a whole community. Ben, this is your morning. You're in the Spirit of God. It's your morning. Let's just take a few more minutes and do that. And I think Bill will give you the high side as soon as we get everything synced up here and at home. While we wait, um, I'm going to... Hey, good morning, church. It's Michelle Joyce, connecting with you from my home in Snohomish, Washington. Please join me in the call to worship, praying the response. From the shores of our lives, Jesus calls us into the celebration of worship. Let us worship our God. From the edge of our worries and concerns, Jesus calls us into hope. Of conversion, Let us claim the hope of, of Christ Jesus. And from the shallow places in our hearts, Jesus calls us into the depths of his love. Let us celebrate the gift of his love. From the words you hear. From the breaking waves of sadness in our lives, Jesus calls us into joy. Let us renew our spirits in his joy. From the rising tides of our conflicts, Jesus calls us into the shores of peace. I will extol you let us rest for you have in his peace. Up and did not let let us celebrate the love of God and receive the blessings of Christ God, Jesus. Let us worship God. 
healed me. Let's pray. Oh Lord, you brought up my soul from Sheol. Today, we reflect on the story of Saul's transformation and renewed vision. Sing Creator God, Lord, open our eyes to new ways that we might be part of an ever-expanding community of hope, faith, for and witness. His anger is but for a Amen. Moment. His hey, good morning, church. It's Michelle, Michelle Joyce, Breathe. connecting with you from my home in Snohomish, Washington. Breathe. Please join me in the call to worship. Weeping may linger for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Breathe hey, good, good morning, morning, church. church. It's Michelle, Michelle Joyce, Joyce connecting, connecting with you from my home in Snohomish, Washington. Please, Please join, join me in the call to worship, worship. praying a response. Never be moved. By From the shores, shores of our lives, lives Jesus established me as a strong mountain. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried, and to the Lord I made supplication. What profit is there in my death if I go down to pit? Isn't that a wonderful question? What if we asked God, what profit is it to you, O God, if I did not prosper, if I was not well? What an intimate question to ask our God. Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hey, Hear, good Lord, morning. And be gracious to me. O oh Lord, be my helper. You have turned my mourning into dancing. You have taken off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, so that my soul may praise you and not be silent. O oh Lord, my God, I will give thanks for you forever. This is from the NRSV version and uses uh, old archaic language of Lord, which you can substitute with God or Yahweh. I Okay. Okay. How are you? Good morning. It is Miss Jen, and I am back here for another children's time, but I am live and in person, which seems fitting um, on my last official Sunday here. And so this morning's Bible story is about Saul. And as you may or may not know, Saul goes through a transformation. And through his faith journey, um, he learns more about Jesus, and he becomes a disciple of Jesus. 
And it just made me think that through all of our faith journeys, whether they look like Saul's or not, we should be getting closer to Jesus. We should be getting closer to each other. And so change is hard, but we need to change in our faith journey. And it's because of my faith that I'm able to make the change. But just because my change in job doesn't mean that I am changing my faith. It is because of my faith in Jesus that I have the courage and that I know that no matter where I go or where I am, that God is with me and loves me. And I hope that you all feel that same way in your faith journeys. And as a church, I am excited to see the changes that are happening at Aldersgate and what might happen because we don't know and the unexpected might happen <laughs> and hopefully it's beautiful like butterflies flying will you pray with me thank you god for my time at aldersgate church in the children and youth family role thank you for these people who have surrounded me with love who have allowed me to go deeper in my faith, who have supported me, and just thank you for being with us as we take this step of transition and we remain a family in faith. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Let us arise for our praise today. So this song, more than any other song, represents to me the youth of the church. Um, it was when I first got here and uh, Susie and Ben were here, we learned it, we sang it, we sang it when, was it Megan next and then Carrie and Nick and now Jen. Um, a long history of really, really amazing youth leaders. Their importance to us cannot be overstated. And uh, well, I really am hoping that you youth and you young at heart will join in with us. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down. For the joy of the Lord I'm trading my sickness I'm trading my pain I'm laying them down For the joy of the Lord I say yes Lord, yes Lord Yes, yes Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm pressed, but not crushed. Persecuted, not abandoned. Stuck down, but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. That his joy is going to be my strength. Though sorrow may last for the night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. 
I say yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. Amen. 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 All right. Have a seat. Thank you, youth, for throwing in the uh, assorted summit-related things. <laughs> Thank you, Patty and Roger. There are times we don't always want to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. So I'm uh, grateful for the leadership in the church that helps us to praise God always and in all circumstances. So let us share in the prayers of the people. The flowers this morning is in honor of Betty Ferdine's mother. God of love and grace, we trust you are the source of all that energizes transformation. We pray in your presence that this be a place of welcome, a home to all, a community of forgiveness, a place to learn how to be together, a way of growing closer together, learning from each other, and trusting one another. May we become aware of any implicit biases and internalized prejudice of people, even unforgiveness of our own selves. May we celebrate the variety of life in all and confront how living suspiciously with one another, intentionally and or not, harms all of us. May we believe love can transform. May we refuse to let life make us bitter with one another and grant ourselves the time to love life again. Creator God, may we be the change that opens our community to the impossible, that accepts people can change and be renewed, and that your patience and time is long enough for us to find the right time to come to believe love is stronger than hate, goodness is stronger than evil, Life is stronger than death. And trusting that your love is pervasively present in our petitions of both personal and communal in nature, and that our lives and our well-being is intimately known by you before we even pray, and that our wholeness is interconnected, and that this is your way for justice and peace for all your creation, we lift up our prayers with and for. Solid ground underneath Dave Maybe's fee, fit, David Maybe's feet as he experienced a fall. For Lee Fox in pain after a broken collar, collarbone and return home from the emergency room, may she be provided for, O oh God, including provisions of meals by the communities your hands and feet as disciples of Christ that love one another. For Bob Olson and his four best friends at Patriot Glen, as they are again re-experiencing lockdown with COVID, um, for Bob and his friends and the community. Here are prayers, O oh God, for Polly Williams and the families as we prepare to celebrate her life and resurrection this coming Saturday for all the moving pieces and hands and feet that cry and mourn together as friends. Bless us with your presence. We pray, O oh God, for the Omens family friend Brian, whose mother passed away. We thank you for his caregiving ways and the witness he bears for love that trickles down to our children and plays forward through the generations. We pray for the Thornis's friend Adeline, whose sister died with cancer and her son died with COVID. Lord, redeem all that is not redeemable in this life in your eternal time, may we know the joy of resurrection by faith. 
We pr pray today, O oh God, for the Methodist Church, some calling it May Day, as people of your way go on different roads. May all of us be continually changed by your perfecting grace and your love. May we have humility of a future not known, but filled with your hope. And, O oh God, we give you thanks for the love and grace that does not leave us to our own means as we celebrate the transition of Miss Jen and her families from serving faithfully in service through the past years and transitioning to bear witness as laity disciple among us. May we share in their joy. May we share in the grief that comes with transitions. May we hope with them as with and among us. Here are our prayers as we dedicate ourselves and our future to you, trusting your grace-filled love that can change everything. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9, verses 1 through 20. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats Our and murders against so. the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he found any who belonged on the way, men or women, this morning, so he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and you will be told what, to, what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless because they heard the voice but saw no one. Saul got up from the ground, and though his eyes were open, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus, for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple in Damascus called Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and at the house of Judas look for a man of Tarsus named Saul. At this moment he was praying, and he had seen in a vision a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to your saints in heaven and his saints, his saints in Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all who invoke, his, you invoke your name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is an instrument whom I have chosen to bring my name before the Gentiles and kings and before the people of Israel. I myself will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on your way here has sent me so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales 
fell from his eyes, and his sight was restored. Then he got up and was baptized, and after taking some food, he regained his strength. For several days he was with the disciples in Damascus, and immediately he began to proclaim Jesus in the synagogue, saying, He is the Son of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray for your pastor as we work on getting the teleprompter on the right place. Uh, uh, you know, skipping one Sunday and preaching uh, is like skipping a meal for me. You know, you're, you're not as energized. <laughs> I need some food, so <laughs> pray for your pastor. Um, our readings today has two very familiar stories to us as Christians. One in the gospel where Peter is asked, uh, three times if he loves Jesus and commissioned to feed the sheep as well as the story of Saul's conversion that we heard today, who became known as Apostle Paul, one of our most celebrated saints of the church. Both saints revealed to us Christian, to us Christian maturity. In the words of Jesus to Peter, When you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Both saints died as martyrs in the church. I don't think any of us aspire to become martyrs. Neither did they. The story of Saul, once the greatest persecutor known to be while breathing out murderous threats, seeking to imprison believers of the risen Christ, of then emerging community of people calling themselves followers of the way, the early Christian church, later became the greatest propagator, traveling over 10,000 miles to share the good news. He did not hide his past. He wrote later to one of his mentees, Timothy, quote, man. He considered himself, quote, one of the worst sinners. Both their past selves. Moses was a murderer. Jacob and Esau were both swindlers from a dysfunctional family. And King David was both an adulterer and murderer. Is there a place for such people where their theme is their shame is no more? Where judgment received is not as the same as what their actions deserved. We feel to us that the pleasure of God is grace. This is not cheap grace by any means. We see Jesus inviting Peter to the place of his shame by asking him three times, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? A gracious process that seeks not only the healing and restoration of Peter to himself, but also of him to community as he is commissioned, feed my sheep. That should remind us the same number of days Jesus was dead. There is a time of waiting for resurrection. The story... times in our Bible, so not a story to be easily unpacked in one short sermon. Testament, so much of our beloved memorized verses are from his letters to the churches in Corinth, like the love passage in Corinthians 13, letters to the Romans, in Rome, letters to people in Rome, Nothing can separate us from the love of God. His letters to Galatia, Philippi, Thessalonica, pray without ceasing. 
Maybe that's what he did in those three days waiting. In the story today, without Ananias' own call and his response of, here I am, Lord, and yielding to doing the action God asked him to do, going against himself to reach out to someone who persecuted his, his people, the greater focus in today's story seems to be also how Ananias became part of God's collective restoration of all God's people. Those we think are not worthy to be redeemed, and yet God's will is to restore not only Paul's sight, but also the sight of the collective people of God, including beneficiaries like you and I, who has been changed by the good news in our scriptures as written later by Apostle Paul. We need each other to survive. We are more than our worst betrayals of God's grace and love. We are more than our worst sins and failures. Paul's story reminds us not only how to receive God's grace, love, forgiveness, as well as what I find encouraging, his own capacity for self-forgiveness, liberating him to practice his faith as he tells it to Timothy later, quote, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward. Jesus' voice to Paul on that Damascus road has the power to remind us that the risen Christ does not waste time on judgment that is in the nature of revenge or violence or retribution or casting away those who are blind to love and hate and haters, and that the risen Christ is always inviting people, the most unlikely to sing possibilities to the newness of God's life, returning to our creator by another road back home. After Jesus' resurrection, we do not hear stories of him using his almighty power, the power to rise from the dead, and to use that power, for example, to revenge on Pontius Pilate's household, or persecute the soldiers who nailed him to the cross, or overturning the Roman Empire by violence and war. We see Jesus using that almighty power to raise the dead to new life. We see Jesus forgiving, restoring, and preparing breakfast by the lakeshore, having conversations with Peter that releases shame and healing wounds that could fester, holding space of doubt and questions with Thomas, listening to strangers on the road, and feeding hungry disciples. Jesus focuses on restoring and redeeming relationships. Jesus, with humility, engages in relationships that offer scandalous forgiveness that releases people from blindness, prejudice, judgment of safe hatred, shame, despair, and fear. We all need Jesus to speak to us today. Jesus chooses to feed and tend his sheep. Shame cannot survive the judgment of God's love in Christ Jesus. Love liberates our worst failures into God's purpose of redeeming. The challenge of the gospel is that it is good news to both the just and the unjust. Paul, once the unjust, receives grace and becomes a bearer of justice. The good news is no baby food and needs a chewing that is difficult. It is hard to swallow. More than the change in Saul to Paul in today's story, I am challenged by the call on Ananias and the community of righteous Christ followers to go to Saul, who persecuted them, the church. Who would imagine that Paul would later be preaching in their synagogues to people, probably had relationships to those that Paul threw in prisons? God's ways are not our ways. Let us be open to God's imagination and ways for us. This is what we witness to as people of the resurrection. Today, the United Methodist Churches are encouraged to celebrate Native American Ministry Sunday, and it's one of the things we as United Methodists do well together. 
The first church I served often would say what many smaller United Methodist churches also often say, we are a small church with a big heart. United Methodist Church comes in different sizes and in its local contacts with members making up each church both share many commonalities of being United Methodist as well as distinct local histories and ways of being. Though often we like to think of ourselves as having more in common than not and being united, today, May 1st, with the claim launching of the Global Methodist Church and this past week's resignation of the former retired bishop of one of our Southern Annual Conferences from the Council of Bishops to support the Global Methodist Church, it seems that our shared commonalities does not outweigh our distinct differences. So more than any other time in the past, I have participated in this celebration of Native American Ministry Sunday. This one seems more poignant. And the grace that I, we might need to remember. One of the essential understandings of being church, the body of Christ, being a member for me, that keeps me keeping on and faithful to the body is that it keeps me connected with humility. Humility that arises with gratitude for not just the immediate incarnational understanding that our lives together are greater than the sum of our individual lives, but that our individual lives that spans an average, say, 80 plus years lived together in community as church, the body of Christ is able to transcend that time into something more infinite as into God's eternal time. We praise God and we serve as part of the purpose of God, the will of God that is more expansive, scandalous, and gracious, that multiplies in ways that are both evident now as well as the mystery of it, like a tree planted under the shade that we will not be able to sit. What keeps me grounded in the joy of worshiping God and continuing faithfully in service is that truth that we as the body are greater than its parts. So on this day of both Native American Ministry Sunday and what some people are calling May Day for the United Methodist Church, I'm needing to sit in the presence of God and as member of what we identify as the body of Christ to remember me, us, to that purpose of humans created in God's image that says we are more than what each of us understands and proclaims as truth. On Native American Ministry Sunday, I'm reminded in my giving like that of a child with two loaves of bread, that a little bit or just enough of love and generosity that we can share to support from each local church can like yeast in bread like those two loaves of bread that fed the 5,000, become in the hands of God represented by the body of Christ, become more than its total. That's what we call abundant grace. One of the best parts of being Methodist is our theologies and understandings on extraordinary grace. It is one of the ways that our denomination serves that I appreciate and celebrate. And today, as I recognize that church, the body of Christ, and particularly today as the United Methodist Church, is and has been in the process like living cells that divide is changing, like it did in Apostle Paul's context, as understandings of their faith change and cause persecutions and divisions, I am both saddened by the changes, as it always involves naturally some losses and grief, and I'm also accepting the change is the only constant, and the history of Christianity bears witness to how Christianity itself evolves, and God will continue to grace our way. So today I hope we will practice peace and grace of our risen Christ that surpasses all our understandings and offer blessings to those we may have differences in thought and practice. Our church and world can use more Ananias saying, here I am, Lord, and following through. So let us hold today prayerfully and with humility and reverence that we are part of the living body and that it is greater than its sum parts. Let us move steadfastly in love. Let us begin by acknowledging today that for thousands of years, the space where we are prayerfully gathered today was under the care of the Salish Coast and Duwamish people. Their presence in this region is remembered and woven into the history of our community. 
I encourage us on this Native American Ministry Sunday and every day that we find ways to partner in repairing past harm and to move forward with awareness and respect. Being new to this region of our country, I am being educated in the multiple ways that we are invited to celebrate and embrace the contributions of First Americans. We can do this by collectively naming evil that has been done to our Native American siblings and repent of our role in it and ask and receive forgiveness. We cannot only claim the goodness of being part of a greater than the sum total without also the accountability for the harm done as a collective body over history. We are reminded of trauma inflicted by boarding schools, including those run by Methodists in the United States, whose main purpose was to destroy language and the culture of Native Americans. Our church has directly been part of the genocide and trauma of Native American people. I pray that in this season of resurrection, we experience renewal through taking collective ownership of our own transgressions as the United Methodist Church. At minimum, we need to be open to listening to the voices that speak of experiences of harm. These are the words from the Native American International Caucus to the Council of Bishops, quote, the unresolved historical trauma associated with the cultural genocide and years of stripping Native Americans of their culture, land, and language through the church and government sanctioned boarding schools with the more, quote, kill the Indian, save the man, has wrecked havoc on Native American families. From addictions and domestic abuse to suicide and mental illness, insufficient acknowledgement of the harm perpetrated and the lack of reparations have damaged Native American communities for generations. In Revelations, John breaks open the reality of the Roman Empire. The oppressive empire is not to be worshiped. Salvation is not found in politics or government, but in relationship with God and God's creation. As we consider the slaughter of the native people and the observation of Good Friday, the slaughter of Christ on the cross just a few weeks ago, do we recognize the power of resurrection that is possible through God's grace? Are we ready to join our voices with many angels surrounding the throne, the thousands and thousands, quote, singing with full voices, worthy is the lamb that was slaughtered to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. Our salvation comes from Jesus as we repent and repair, not with empty promises, but with meaningful change of heart and mind. The United Methodist General Conference resolved in 2016 to affirm quote, the sacredness of American Indian people, their language, culture, and gift to the church and the world. We are reminded today that Native Americans have persevered in faith through the ordeal of being removed from their homelands, contending with racism, and dealing with the challenge of unemployment and economic diversity, adversity. For more than 180 years, despite this trauma, First, Americans have been working through Methodism for the gospel of Jesus Christ. We can share this history with the Global Methodist Church. Today, we have an opportunity to support and celebrate Native American ministries with our offering. We begin to repair past harm and participate in sharing Christ's love through seminary scholarships and annual conference outreach, engaging in ministries that equip and empower Native American pastors congregations, and seminary students to authentically worship and serve Jesus with the fullness of culture and heritage. You can find these uh, resources I'm quoting from the UnitedMethodistChurch.org. We trust like Anias and Paul that when we engage in right relationship with God and with all God's people and God's creation, that we can respond with all the earth and all the saints with joy. As Apostle reminds us that, quote, God of grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself restore, support, and strengthen and establish you, will establish us. To God be the power forever and ever. Alleluia. 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 Amen. Thank you. 
a blessing for Jen. My deep gratitude is that this is not a goodbye. <laughs> this is a, uh, a moment in which we lift up and celebrate and we mark a transition as we give her time and space to be with and amongst us in a new way. So I invite our SPRC representative, the Thornis family, to come up and for Jen to come up. And after we have some words of gratitude and gift, I will invite the whole congregation to offer a blessing for Jen and Jacob and Justin. And at that time, I will invite our children and youth to come up as well and maybe make a semicircle here around Jen. And so uh, let us remember this is our way for us to continue the journey with Jen through these transitions and for us to become new, to grow in different ways together. So I invite Kristen Thorsness and the family up here. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we moved here in 2016 from Renton and planned to join a new church as soon as we moved up, but being new is very difficult. So we kept driving back down to Renton and attending our church that we had been at for years. And we got to Christmas Eve and we had so many plans and different events we were going to. It was going to be difficult to go back down to Renton, come back up to Bellevue. So we decided, you know, Christmas Eve is a good time to sneak in the back. Things are kind of frantic. Just, you know, see how the church's vibe is and sneak back out. So that was our plan. But if you know Jen and I had children with me, that is not what happened. Uh, we came in and were immediately greeted by a wonderfully smiling face. And she looked at my kids and said, oh, to my daughter, you look about the size of an angel. Would you like to be in our pageant? <laughs> and so my kids were delighted to be recruited into the Christmas Eve pageant uh, the first time at church. And I remember sitting there and watching the pageant, watching Jen kind of organize the kids and thinking, this is the kind of place I want my kids to grow up. So after that, we went home happy and, and we came back and we came back every week. So... She, sorry, I'm tearing up a little bit. I just, the impact that Jen has had on my family and on our entire church is too big to put into words. It's too big to put into words. Um, as I've been talking with people since we found out that Jen has a new job opportunity, the phrase that I've heard over and over again is, Jen is the heart of the church. And I think that that is accurate. She draws in our children. She makes everyone feel welcome. And my greatest joy in this is that we are not losing Jen, right? Jen is still going to be here. <laughs> we are not losing her, and we are happy for her for this new opportunity. Um, but we wanted to take a moment to really thank her and kind of shower her with some, some presents <laughs> and thank her for everything that she has done for our church community. So I have Jack and Simon are going to bring up some gifts. So we have a gift from the church and then also... Um, a bag of cards. And if anyone else brought cards, I tried to collect all the cards from people, but if you brought ones, you can put them in there. Um, but yes, I need to give you a hug. I just, we appreciate you so, so much. Yes. And I think Pastor Wanji was going to come do a blessing. Yes. Thank you. I'm good with the mic. Well, um, like Kristen, Jen was one of the persons that one of the persons, it's kind of awkward standing there. <laughs> um, Jen, I came here during COVID. We had limited. Jen was probably the person I saw the most often in the church space. Uh, she is probably one of the only, well, aside from our two musicians, one of the only staff that has been uh, continuous here during the COVID time. So uh, personally, I am indebted and cannot express all my gratitude to Jen for the last two years and the ways that we learned to uh, listen to one another, to be collaborative, to make so many decisions with so many people involved doing all kinds of things different. I think everyone knows that Jen, Jen is a woman, uh, a Jen of all trades, 
<laughs> and uh, some of us are not good at all those things. We're just a little bit mediocre at all of them, but she's excellent at all of them. There is one Jen, and it'll be uh, my expectations for our church as we pray for this role, uh, new person, is not that we will replace Jen. Um, she's definitely one of a kind, um, gifted by God, and we are ever grateful. So I will, I'm personally grateful that we will continue our relationship in the months and years to, God, uh, to come and that God is good. <laughs> uh, it was both a uh, hard news to receive as she transitions, but also giving thanks to God that she will uh, be part of the life of our church, her and her children. So this, as I said, is not a goodbye, but a um, what are we going to do next? What are we going to do next? And how are we going to do that? So let's, uh, uh, let's celebrate that. I invite the children and youth to come up if you are present here and just sort of make a semicycle around here with Jen. And um, I will do a prayer after, but the way I would like to bless Jen as it came to me through the Spirit is if everyone online, friends, reach out your hands. I know you might look ridiculous if you're there by yourself putting out your hands, but and invite our congregation to lay out your hands. And I invite us to sing the song, God is So Good, not only uh, for the goodness of God, but also that in and through Jen and her ministries, her relationships, her love and compassion and uh, mission minister among us, we have received the goodness of God. Let's celebrate that. Let us uh, sing to Jen, but it is in and through Jen that we are praising God uh, for all that God has done in the past years, and it's God is still will do. So let us sing, God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, she's so good. Justin, Jacob, would you come up here next to your mom? And if everyone would keep your hands uh, toward. And call upon the Holy Spirit to energize our love for the future transformation that is unfolding for Jen and in her family and in her career and in our church. Let us pray. God, our helper of all times and places, we give you thanks for Jen and her boys, Justin and Jacob, who has witness to your steadfast love and faithfulness that has transformed them as far as they can remember from their times of weeping into dancing. They have been a steadfast and faithful presence, especially, O oh God, through these last two years during COVID, to bear witness to God of their hope, God, the rock of their redeeming. And we are so grateful, God, for all the transformations that has been witnessed during Jen's ministries here, and also for all that will still bear fruit in all the mysterious ways in which her love, her visits, her phone calls, her hands doing art, her children's messages, her care, her prayers still is unfolding. We thank you that she and Jacob and Justice will continue to be members of our body here at Aldersgate, that we will continue to enrich one another, to bless one another. So in this time of transition, oh God, help us to continue to grace one another. Help us to know that you yourself, oh Christ, will continue to encourage us, strengthen us, and help us to be people of enduring justice and peace and love and faithfulness. We look forward to, O oh God, with excitement, all the ways that your love will be made manifest and incarnate through Jen and Jacob and Justin. And so at this time, O oh God, we bless upon Jen and Justin and Jacob that they will be clothed with your joy, that their mouths would never stay silent to praising you, that they will dance under your eyes of love and delight in all that unfolds on their new journey. 
And we bless them, O oh God, that Jen and Jacob and Justin and us as the, as the church will continue to offer our thanksgiving to you, O oh God, now and forever. Amen. We do have a reception afterwards, so there'll be plenty of our, our time to uh, do remembrance with Jen. Ruth and Cindy. If you have not yet prepared a solid and liquid at home, please go ahead and prepare some to celebrate with us during our great Thanksgiving. This is Christ's table. All are welcome here, and all always means all. Christ invites us to his table, all who love him, who earnestly turn away from their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. We come before you, God, in search of courage, yet we can grow suspicious of our own movements and actions. We notice ways we avoid confrontation and speak differently before these, those we fear or do not understand. Remove from our senses, our minds, and our hearts the things that keep us from loving, from trusting, and from getting to know those who we judge as different. Recreate us, O God, and fashion us to be free in all times and places, to live as you want us to live. Amen. And now hear these words of affirmation. We receive the gracious love of God. We are made whole in God's presence. We welcome all into God's community of love. Let us pass the peace of Christ with one another, by elbows, by waves on our online friends. The peace of Christ be with you, Ruth. The peace of Christ be with you, Cindy. And also with you. <laughs> the bread of life, God's love okay. for us. <clears throat> the cup of grace that transforms. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, of Peter and Paul, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, God of goodness. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who is full of the Spirit. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope 
through the resurrection of your son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of the darkness into the marvelous gift, light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to the disciples, and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread, and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as holy living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and online and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by your blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, with the confidence in God's love and grace, the power by which we are transformed, let us pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. Blessed one, our Father and our Mother, holy is your name. May your love be enacted in the world. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love and all that your love brings to birth and the fullness of love that will be are yours now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf, the bread which we give thanks and break and share in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the passionate love of Christ poured out for us. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The love of Christ for you. You can open and take. Let us share in the prayer of thanksgiving. 
Thank you, merciful God, for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace the world cannot give, for joy in the company of friends, for the splendors of creation, and for the mission of justice you have made our own. Give us the gift of this Holy Communion, oneness of heart, love for neighbors, forgiveness of enemies, the will to serve you every day, and life that never ends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God, you have the power to transform the most unlikely people into influential witnesses. We dedicate ourselves to being open to the movement of the Holy Spirit and moments where we might be agents of healing and change in today's world. Receive our special gifts today supporting Native American Ministry Sunday as we acknowledge all of the Coast Salish and Duwamish people, the ancestral keepers of the land in which we connect and gather. Receive our gifts to make manifest your presence and help us to be a means for encountering the risen Christ in a broken world. Amen. If you are able in body and or spirit, let us arise for a hymn that is one of Miss Jen's favorites uh, as we continue the blessing at the end of this service to the Fellowship Hall. Uh, and I will invite Jen to offer the blessing with me. And then afterwards, if you would stay a few minutes because we do have a special announcement from Melissa. <clears throat> I want to build four walls and keep you safe inside and catch you when you fall. Don't want to see you cry when you walk down the street, make you hold my hand. I want to lift you off your feet and be your Superman, Superman. I want to take you for a ride when you cannot sleep Brush your hair to the side and get you on your cheek I want to stay up all night making sure you breathe Oh my God, what a gift you have given me I brought you into this world and I'm sorry it's a little bit crazy tell you there is so much good now the future looks a little bit hazy but see god me and him have a promise he'll give us everything that we need so have faith hope and love faith hope and love repeat i want to show you the world climb the mountain tops I watch you dance in the rain I hope it never stops Whatever tomorrow brings I hope it brings you joy and When it's all too much I hold you in my arms Brought you into this world And I'm sorry it's a little bit crazy But I tell you there's so much good the future looks a little bit hazy But to God me and him have a promise He'll give us everything that we need To have faith, hope, and love Faith, hope, and love But there will be days when you lose your faith And there will be nights when you give up hope Disappointment and pain And you flirt with the shame So you call me at the end of your rope And I'll give you whatever you have there's only one thing you need And that's love, love I give you my love, love My love, love I give you my love, love I brought you into this world And I'm sorry it's a little bit crazy I tell you there's so much good 
Though the future looks a little bit hazy See God me and him have promised He'll give us everything that we need So have faith, hope, and love Faith, hope, and love Repeat Faith, hope, and love Faith, hope, and love Repeat Faith, hope, and love Faith, hope, and love Repeat Jan, would you please join me? And just because Jan is transitioning from staff to late, it doesn't mean that she will be uh, excused from future participation in worship with <laughs> Pastor Wanji. <laughs> <laughs> the Spirit of Christ says, get up and go. Go and extend God's circle of love. Go and offer a healing touch to the world. Go and celebrate Spirit's presence in all. Our eyes have been opened, and we are filled with new visions of the way. We will go where the Spirit of Christ leads. Amen. Amen. Let us be seated, and I'm going to invite Melissa Pierce to share some um, announcement about an important mission that's coming up. Yes. And I know So I'm going to be standing out there. I just want to remind everyone, Lazy F is coming up. It's a month, pretty much a month from today-ish. Um, and so over Memorial Day weekend, Friday to Sunday, I'd love to um, get some more sign-ups. Um, the email went out. It's online registration, online payment, trying to make it easy, but I'm happy to answer questions. And I have a list of the projects. If anyone wants to see them, I'll have them out there. Thank you.